Hello and welcome to Cornish Walking Trails. Today we're going down to some film locations in West Penwith that have been used for the Poldark series in Series 1. Penbirth Cove has featured in uh, Series 2 as well. We'll be visiting there. We'll be walking along the cliff to Port Kerno. Port Kerno Beach is used as Nampara Cove in Poldark. There is some extra footage to this film. We've put it together in a separate little video that actually explores Logan Rock on its own. I hope you look forward to watching that as well. Let's have a quick look at the walk instructions. We're going to park at Tree near the pub. It's a four mile walk. They reckon it takes three hours. There's a grid reference there. Rated moderate, so we would expect some inclines. Come on then, doggies in the car! Are you excited? We've arrived in Treen and parked the car, very easy to park, near the pub. The first instruction on our walk but says return to the main road, turn right before quickly taking a further right sign to Penberth. Let's come down the road, a gorgeous little pond, an archway. Follow the lane to the pretty fishing cove below. Bamboo hedge, have you ever seen oh, bamboo. a bamboo hedge? No. So we're now arriving in the pretty little cove of Pemba. This has been used in Poldark in series two. Spoiler alert now, there's a scene where Prudy Painter is washing clothes on the river using these stepping stones. And the cottages behind are all made up to look as if they're in the 18th century. Pemba Cove, LU2. The capstan. This was the original method of hauling boats from the sea before the modern day winch which is now used. <laughs> We're just getting pinched to the beach. <laughs> Across the stream in front of the sea. There's a new notice here to dog walkers. Please cross the river using stepping stones to avoid the fish landing area on the slipway. Ascend the coastal path adjacent to the Grey Winch House. A fairly steep route zigzags up the cliffside to the top. That breeze. Oh, oh, cool. This is quite steep. Are you puffing? Just a bit, but it's nice. At the top, a well-worn path through gorse crosses a flat plateau. Logan Rock is revealed to your left. Just teetering. In fact, they all look like that. Next instruction says, continue on to cross a small stream before eventually reaching a path junction. Turn left to visit Logan Rock. So in, in the distance we've got Porf Kerno Beach and then there's the Minak Theatre and as we come around the headland we think that's Logan's Rock in the distance. Surf looks fantastic. And there's the rampart from the fortification. The path splits, keep left. The right fork returns to the car park at Tree. Take a further left fork to remain on the coastal path. There's the Minac and Port Kerno Beach just visible. How the fucker? How the fucker? Look at the size of that. It's huge, isn't it? <laughs> wow, it's massive. How is that staying there like that? The path emerges at a further junction upon which a right turn is indicated to Treen. Here, take the second path on the left, indicated by a coast path sign. So here's the headland of Logan's Rock. Loads of balancing rocks. Pass between two concrete bunkers before reaching a waymark post in front of a gate. Here cross the stone star which is close to a National Trust Porf Kerno sign and bear left to follow the coastal path in the direction of the large red and yellow cable warning sign. It could be that great big yellow and red cable warning sign. Oh yeah. Bear right towards Porf Kerno Beach and as you descend, note steps leading from the beach up the opposite cliff side towards the Minac Theatre. This is Porf Kerno Beach, very pretty. Hello. It's pretty steep coming down there and there's lots of big, big stones to climb over. But it's good fun. Did you enjoy that? Yeah. Yeah? It's pretty cool coming down there, isn't it? Good pair of shoes needed. Time for an ice cream? I think so. Mm. 
Porthcurno Beach has been used in Poldark. It's actually used as Nampara Cove. So it's the cove below Ross Poldark's farm. And we see quite a lot of scenes from here. The beautiful turquoise sea is probably one of the most remarkable features about this beach. It is glorious. There's the cable hut, Porthcurno Cable Hut. Must have been There's a, a bit of cable for telecommunications all over the world, even in India. Inside the cable hut at Porthcurno Beach, they're the cables that run under the sea and take Morse code. Oh, it's a bit, a bit sturdy. It's that carried Morse code. It's a chunky wire. And communications took minutes instead of years. Oh, mate, that's a lot better. Yeah, no mobiles back then, babe. No. Cable. Is it shocking, Millie? Very. Stand up and let's have a look. Oh, my face touched me up. Wow, it's huge. Fourth Kono Beach. These little steps put into the rock so you can climb up the cliff path. Lifeguard at Porth Kerno. It's got to be one of the best jobs in the world, isn't it? Just admiring the view before we climb the cliff up to the Minak Theatre. Up to the Minak. Pass adjacent to the Minak Theatre before crossing the car park and walking through a wooden and stone kissing gate. The coast path follows the bottom of field boundaries to reach a path junction at the start of the National Trust headland of Pedden Mena Mere. Follow the direction of the waymark post to take the coastal path which passes above the beautiful sandy cove of Porth Chapel Beach. Okay. okay, so let's just have a little look at our map. We started in Treen, we went down to Penberth with a little fishing cove. We've gone along the coast, we saw Logan's Rock and wandered out there. We've been across Porth Kerno Beach, circumnavigated the Minac, crossed the car park. We're now heading towards Porth Chapel Beach. Oh, it's stunning. Look at that surf tumbling in. Wow. Just look at this fantastic scenery. I don't think you can beat Cornwall sometimes. Cross a small wooden footbridge before climbing away from Paul's Chapel Beach to pass the Holy Well of St Levin. Shortly after the well at the Waymark Post, leave the coastal path. The trek emerges to cross a metal lane to enter the churchyard on the opposite side. Taking a breather. Oh, oh it's it? lovely to see the wedding. So they've just had a wedding in there, Millie. Bear left to circle the church. So there's two coffin styles. We're ignoring the first one. I'm going up to the second one. And the actual bit in the middle it's of the style is coffin shaped, which... Millie, did you like that? No. Bit eerie, isn't it? Yeah. Cross the field, climb stone steps before continuing across a path between fields heading for the farm buildings in front of you. A stone cross is passed halfway across. Pass through a metal kissing gate next to a wooden farm gate. So the kissing gate has, has fallen over and they've just left the metal gate open. Before bearing left across a parking area to a further metal kissing gate. Turn right after the gate to follow the track along the edge of the field. The dormitory type buildings that can be seen ahead were part of the cable and wireless operations here. The cable and wireless buildings now are a museum. Turn right and cross the road to pass through a gap in the wall in front of some garages. Shortly after the garages bear left up a grassy path to pass through a gate. Right, there doesn't seem to be any garages here anymore. They might be gone because there's lots of new houses here. Head across the field towards farm buildings. Little farmhouse. Farmhouse up there, isn't it, Millie? Yeah. Oh, wow. Wow, this walk's really corny. Loads of corn flies. Continue into a third field, heading diagonally towards the telegraph pole to the right of farm buildings. Pass over a wooden star which is adjacent to a metal gate. The rest of the instructions just tell us to keep crossing stiles and crossing fields, so we'll just film a little bit of it until we get back to the car. We're in the village of Treen. I'm going to go back to the car that way. Oh. That says Land's End, three and a half miles, and St Burian, two miles. From Treen? Yeah, and they call them AA signs. Back at the car and a long deserved drink for the doggies. Pub meal for us. So we've found a lovely little pub and we're going to have our evening meal here. Uh, tiny strawberries wow. 
good walk. Fantastic. Really yeah. good, yeah. Good. I'm tired. <laughs> good paths, wasn't it? It was good directions. We were easy to follow. Fantastic views. Some interesting things to look at. How would you rate that? I'd give it 8 out of 10. 8 out of 10? Yeah. I'm tired. <laughs>